Hello, my name is Maz. I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry and on this channel we're talking about stocks. Today we'd like to bring more general topic as a drug discovery overall. As I'm medicinal chemist, I'm involved in drug discovery myself and I believe that some of you may want to listen to my opinion on how to approach investment into a biotech and what to consider before investing your money and how to react to news. Also, this video should help you to build more realistic view on biotech stock in general. And if you enjoy biotech stocks, you may stick around and subscribe to my channel as I'm planning to overview different stocks in the field, including CRISPR related companies and biotech in general. So, and for now, let's dive in into general drug discovery. I would like to start by showing you one graph from this article from Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. I'm not going to show you the whole article because of the copyrights. I believe that I might be in trouble. So here is just abstract of what this article is all about and they analyzing FDA approved drugs for the last 10 years. And this is why I believe it's interesting because this is the most relevant piece of data. And as you can see that this article came out just recently. This is the graph that I wanted to show you from this article. It gives you an idea about time frame required from IND, which stands for Investigational New Drug, to NDA, which stands for New Drug Application. So a new drug application means that this medicine is ready to go to a market and it's been approved by FDA. And as you can see, it can be as short as 2.2 years, but could be as long as more than 20 years. But the majority of drugs, they get approved after 5 to 12 years. And as you can see, that median value is sitting at around 8.1 years. And next, I would like to discuss what's happening inside these 8.1 years. On this slide from FDA, which is dedicated to timeline of drug development, we can see what's happening inside these 8.1 years. And these 8.1 years countdown starts here, after pre and stage. Let's briefly talk about pre and stage because it also takes quite significant amount of time and it's called preclinical stage. And I'm, as a medicinal chemistry PhD, involved in this preclinical stage myself. I'm making new molecules and we test them outside of animals, just in general kind of tests. And if they're good enough, then they, they will proceed to animals. And after they pass animal tests, they will be enabled to continue into phase one, into humans. And in phase one, you normally enroll healthy volunteers just to test that your molecule is not causing any harm in the first place. You're not testing any positive effects at this stage. You only test that it's not harmful, that it doesn't have any side effects that are going to be worse than beneficial effects. And phase one normally done on small group of people around 10 to 50 people on average. And if you can prove that your drug is safe for healthy people, then you can proceed to a phase two. So in phase two, you actually start administering your drug to a people with disease that your medicine was designed for. And if it's good enough after this phase two, which lasts probably like a couple of years, and it's showing great activity, it's showing benefit that it definitely outweigh any risk because all drugs, they have some side effects. If it's all proven, you can actually proceed to phase three, which conclude clinical trials. Phase three in these terms, it's not too different from phase two, but it's just on a bigger scale. So if in phase two, you will have around 100 people or few hundred people, in phase three, it will be already thousands. And if you test your drug on thousands of people and it still seems to be good, then you file all the required clinical data to FDA and submit it. And as you can see, you transition to the next step, which is NDA review. If FDA is happy with all the data that you generated from all these clinical trials and that safety is good and efficiency is good as well, they will issue you approval and then your actual molecule that you created in preclinical stage will finally be registered as a drug. And after FDA approval, your drug is ready to go to market. And then it will transition in so-called phase number four, which is long-term observations and see if any side effects that were not discovered in the clinical trials will be observed in the long term. 
After we discuss this general time frame that required for FDA approval of new drug, I want to show you some other interesting statistics. On this website you can see complete list of biotech stock listed on Nasdaq and most of the biotech stocks they actually listed on Nasdaq and very few on New York exchange. So and here if I'll scroll down just to show you amount of companies that are actually listed on Nasdaq and biotech sector. So as you can see it's 702 here and then at the bottom it's overseas companies that also listed on Nasdaq and it also has another 58 companies. So it's safe to say that in total it's around 750 companies listed on Nasdaq in biotech stock sector. Then I would like to bring back this article that we already looked into and notice that between 2010 and 2019 total number of drugs approved by FDA was 378. And then if we compare this number to the number of companies listed on Nasdaq in biotech sector, you can see that meanwhile Nasdaq has 750 companies in biotech, the total number of drugs for 10 years, yes, 10 years, it's a lot of time, was just 378. Which means for every two companies, only one drug was registered for the last 10 years. And this is on average. Of course, Big pharma companies like AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Novartis, Sanofi, they registered most of these drugs. So to get drug approval for a startup company or in general smaller biotech company is really big deal. So with this information we can estimate how long it will take for a new drug to arrive to the market. And I want to exemplify it by looking at the pipeline of CRISPR therapeutics. So if you open CRISPR therapeutics official website and jump in here on a pipeline you can see that the frontline medicine that they develop in is called ctx001 and if we jump into a clinical study page and all clinical studies are listed at this clinicaltrials.gov so any clinical trials that are actually underway you can find on this website so and what we see here that ctx001 currently in phase one, phase two trials. And last update was just recently, which is good to see that they're updating. An estimated study completion day, it says May 2022. So, and this is gonna be completion of phase one, phase two. And after this, it has to be a phase three, which will take another couple of years. So it's safe to say that this drug could be expected at market at around four years from now. And when you look at the financial statement of this type of company that doesn't produce any drugs yet, you have to take into account this period of time that they will be just burning through cash for their research and development and general expenses without generating any revenue at all. But sometimes story doesn't end just there. After approval, your drug still can be withdrawn. And this is just a Wikipedia page and it's definitely incomplete you can see that number of drugs that were withdrawn from market after approval. So, and in some years, as you can see in 2010, here is at least four drugs listed. In 2020, a few drugs listed. So this is something that you have to consider as well. And if you're jumping all over the place and celebrating that, oh, I finally got the drug approval, it's still not finished because as I told you, in a phase four, in these long-term studies, it still can be some side effects that were unknown before and then your drug can be rejected. Now you might be wondering what's the main criteria that you should be looking for when you invest in a biotech startup that doesn't have any products, that doesn't have any revenue and doesn't have any approved drugs. So and the number one that you should be looking for is a pipeline of this company. And I want to just open again CRISPR Therapeutics website and show you the pipeline and compare it to a pipeline of some established company like Pfizer. So let's see how many drugs CRISPR Therapeutics has in their pipeline. So I can see that four of these drugs, they're already in clinical trials, which is great. And then they have one drug that is already AND enabling. So they're about to start clinical trials, which is also good. And then they have another four drugs that are in research stage. This could be as far away from market as 10 years or more. So, and after we looked at the CRISPR therapeutics pipeline, 
then let's try to see what the pipeline for Pfizer looks like. If you open Pfizer pipeline, you can definitely notice the difference that total amount of drugs in the Pfizer pipeline is 95 and nine of them already in the registration stage, 24 of them in the phase three trials and 35 in phase two, 27 phase one. So they don't even include any research projects in this pipeline because they have so many research projects happening that it's not worth mentioning. They only include here something that is already in clinical trials or registration. And if you're a Pfizer shareholder, you definitely must be happy to see so many drugs in a pipeline in different stages of clinical trials. And as you can imagine, if one of these trials will fail, for Pfizer, it's not going to be a big deal because even if it's in a phase three, one of these drugs will fail, they have another 23 to go on. If we compare this situation to a CRISPR therapeutics, let's go back to their page. They have just four drugs in clinical trials. If one of them fail, it means 25% of the drug candidates in the clinical trials will be dead. And it's a lot for this company. And if drug candidate fails clinical trials, share price normally dropping down significantly. And while for CRISPR therapeutics, it's not going to be the end of the world for them because they have at least four drugs in the pipeline that are already in clinical stages, still the share price will go down dramatically. So, and to illustrate how sharp stock price movement could be, let's have a look at the stock price of Bluebird Buyer. If you open share price chart for Bluebird Buyer, you can see since November till the middle of February, share price was consistent, was just fluctuating around $40, $45, sometimes jumping over 50, but slightly. And then in the middle of February, on this date, Bluebird Buyer reported that some patient got cancer from their treatment and nobody was sure if this is from the actual treatment or people just got cancer by themselves and they were just involved in clinical trials but the share price dropped almost 40 percent and then in a following few weeks up to 45 percent but since it recovered almost 20 percent and this is normal overreaction on the news and if you're confident in this company you shouldn't just sell on this type of news because it was just a speculation that it could be from their treatment. Only if it will be verified, then yes, you might be in trouble. But then you have to look again. If this company has another drugs in the pipeline, and I didn't look into Bluebird Buy if they have anything else in the pipeline. If they have multiple drugs that are in different stages of clinical trials, maybe it's just good buying opportunity instead of just panic selling. And when you see such a big sell-off, in any biotech stock, it's very good reason to put it on a watch list and try to see if the pipeline looks good or not and try to read about this company as much as you can because it can be a really great opportunity to buy it. And as an example of overreaction to a good news, we can look at the checkup stock. As you can see that it got FDA approval just recently and on that day it jumped more than 100%. And then it was brought down quite significantly so and overall it was just 26 percent so this is typical overreaction in a biotech stock and you have to be ready for this i'm not saying that check cup not gonna go high from this point but i feel that nobody really understand how high their sales will be if they will get approval in other countries and in general the market cap is not clear yet. Overall, biotech stocks can give you incredible gains in a one day. As you can see, with checkup, it's just 100% in a single day. But then if you invest in a Bluebird, for instance, you can get 40% minus in the just span of a couple of days. In my opinion, it's a good idea to hold small proportion of your portfolio in the biotech stocks, let's say 5 to 10% max. And if you want to hold more of the biotech field, it's probably a good idea to look at the ETF. Let's say ARK Invest ETF ARKG or something similar that also benefit from high growth in biotech stocks, but it's kind of mitigate your risks. If you want to know more about biotech stocks, subscribe to my channel as I'm planning to make regular videos about biotech companies and I'll see you in the next one.